right, Loy Macedo Sweeney from LoyMacedo.com. Who is Loy Macedo? Think personal branding. Okay, the date is 30th March 2023. Time right now is 1.59 in the afternoon. Okay, now I'm going to share with you a letter that was uh, shared. Uh, it, it was shared by a person who was based in Dubai. Okay, now... Let me quickly give you a disclaimer before I do move ahead. Now, always keep in mind that when a person gives me a letter or uh, states with me a bad experience in UAE or anything, whether it's a relationship or anything, they always position themselves as the good guy or they are very biased towards themselves. Obviously, for example, if you have a relationship, let's say a guy and a girl and um, uh, the guy has the guy and the girl they break up you'll never hear the guy say the girl was good i was very bad and you know uh, i treated her like crap and i deserve to be put in jail no he'll always say i gave her everything but she destroyed my life in the same way if you speak to the girl the girl would say i loved him i gave him everything but he treated me like this you know i'm the victim boo hoo hoo so on one side i want you to keep that level of, uh, you know, understanding that this story that is given to me is his version, okay? I do not know the other side of the story. And uh, like they say, you know, there is his version, her version, and the real version. You know, there are three different versions, okay? So that is number one. The second thing what I want you to know is uh, I share with you stories which which are kind of like, you know, people say negative or, man, you're speaking only over the bad stuff about UAE. Why not speak of the good stuff? My answer to you is very simple. If you're looking for good, happy, happy stories, read Gulf News, College Times, National Newspaper. They will tell you how many people got, uh, you know, lottery tickets, how many people's dreams have come true, how many people are millionaires, how many people found love. It's all positive there. However, if you're looking for negative news, negative or not so happy news, you will not get it from there because it's censored. And people who stay in UAE are very afraid to share stories because maybe someone can sue you or maybe the country can deport you. So I share with you stories that you do not normally get in or you know people will not share. So if you're looking for happy, happy news, you need to unsubscribe from my channel and watch the news that keeps you happy, okay? And last, if not the least, I the reason I share this news is not because I hate UAE. I love UAE because I stayed, I consider it my home. But I share this news so that you're kept aware and you understand that, yes, there is a good side that is being marketed in uh, social media, Dubai is a land of dreams, Burj Khalifa, the tallest tower, Burj Al Arab, Lamborghinis and beautiful women, yacht parties and big money and you can, you know, you live a glamorous life. That is one side. But there is the other side also. So I'm just trying to keep a balance between both. Okay. Having said that, feel free to disagree with me. Comment down below and uh, like... You know, I always like to read. And remember, I do read what you uh, share. Okay. So having said that, let's move on to the email that he sent me. Uh, the only uh, thing which I want you to keep in mind is he sent me an email. There were grammatical errors and, you know, uh, they, they put it in a format that is comfortable to them. I edit it, but the meaning is still the same. It's just that it is edited in a way that is more understandable. And yes, I have totally censored his identity. Okay, so let's start. And he has given me a couple of names here. The names I'm not going to share. I will just share with you the core of the message. Let's start. So this is what he says. One day while walking on the streets in Sarja, a group of plain clothes policemen in a Toyota Corolla pulled up in front of me. Uh, because remember, the CID or the police, whenever they have to catch someone, they don't go with the actual, it's not like a uh, American Hollywood movie, you know, they don't go with their guns and, you know, uh, the cars with all the lights and all that. They go plain clothes when they have to catch someone. So plain clothes, uh, Toyota Corolla pulled in front of me and several others asking for our IDs uh, for, you know, to prove we are who we, you know, we might claim that we are. 
Once after I showed them the identification, I was informed that I was matloob, means I was wanted, but they did not provide any reason. Then they randomly checked other people uh, at different parts of the city. So maybe they were taking the car and went to different parts of the city. And during the next three hours, they arrested in uh, a group of people in a minibus. So apparently he was in a minibus. We were all transferred to the headquarters of Sarja police. And 18 of us were placed in a 4 meter by 2 meter jail cell uh, with a few tattered mattresses, a jug of water and some leftover food in the afternoon. Okay, from the afternoon. Okay, it was close to midnight. Just after midnight, we were handcuffed and taken by a Toyota HIAC highest mini bus to the Dubai police distribution center located in the compound of Terminal 2 Airport in Dubai. Okay, Terminal 2 Airport. Okay, fine. When you arrive at the CID, police headquarters for wanted people, everyone is herded hastily into an enclosure that contains 10 rooms, each with four double bunk beds. There's a small pray, prayer area, a communal toilet with four squat toilets. That means you have to you know, sit down. It's not like the American or uh, you know the seated one. And four showers. During weekdays, the yard is open for an hour or two for the inmates. However, during official holidays and weekends, it is closed, leaving the inmates stuck inside for up to a week. The capacity is for 18 people, but most of the time there are 100 to 150 people in place. Oh, how do you fit uh, 100 people where 18 people can fit? Okay, fine. I don't, I don't know if he's exaggerating. Maybe it's like 50 people, but 100 is, I don't know, then you'll be like, there's no place to literally breathe. Okay, anyway. During your arrival and initial arrest, you are not informed what your offenses are or what the sentence is. You have to wait for the next working day. This I agree with him because I have known people who are even friends or people that I know who have been arrested. When you are arrested uh, and if there is a day off, those two days, nothing. You are just kept there and you have to wait until the working day. There are two working phones in a narrow hallway, but you need to obtain a system to access the phones and then to buy credit from a machine to make calls. You will also have to fight with a dozen of other people crowding over you, waiting to make their call. Three times a day, everyone moves into the mess hall where food is served. The facility is rented by the CID from Dubai International Airport and divided into two sections. Dubai Central Jail is divided into two parts. The morning part is known as out jail. This is where the misdemeanors and immigration cases serve their time. It is supposed to be a light punishment facility. It has four chambers divided into two floors and several rooms that serve as offices adjacent to the building for small yards as well as mess halls. There are only a handful number of officers who actually do their work in reality and the inmates have no access to them. The officers assign other inmates to do the work and these are called amber foremen. Months will pass by without the officers entering the inmates block unless there's an emergency. Oh, that's crazy. Okay. Inmates are kept locked in for 21 hours a day out of the 24. And during weekends and official holidays, you are there for the whole day, adding to the misery and sickness. The overall manager, now here he gives a couple of names, which I'm not going to say because, you know, I need to protect their identity also. The overall manager for the prison is Brigadier something. Okay, M. I'll just say M. And the out jail prison warden is Colonel is given his full name, K. The person in charge are Captain M, another M, and another M. There are three M and M and M's, like M and M's. Okay. Both are borderline sadistic with their interaction and constantly humiliate and pressurize inmates. Uh, this is a very common phenomenon when people are given charge of power and they can abuse anyone without supervision. Okay, upon your arrival, you will be taken in where you will be processed. Means you will go through the process. You will have to deposit your cash, valuables, clothes and possessions or luggage you had at the time of arrest. After you will be photographed. And this, I have also personally experienced when one day one of the policemen caught me. I was shopping 
uh, near the shopping mall he got me because he just took me he didn't tell me why and after they took me into the where was this bird dubai bird dubai police station uh when i asked they didn't tell me they made me sit in one closed uh, uh, room like you know uh, and then they transferred me to an inspector where he's like shuendak like he asked me he was an inspector so then he said what is all this he asked me about my tattoos and what is all this then he looked at my son he is shaitan shaitan and he was saying devil the guy who arrested me was like a bearded guy mutawa and mutawa means you know person who dedicates his life to god and prays to god and whatever you can correct me if i'm wrong there and then uh, in the evening they kept me there the whole day huh? in the evening one photographer came official photographer took photographs of different tattoos on my face and side and head and all that and he said ye kya kiya he was an indian guy so he said ye kya kiya pagal hai kya he saying tum khalas hai tum khalas ye shaitan ka kaam hai he was also muslim so he said this is a work of devil anyway i managed to get out because i contacted my contacts and finally they allowed me to make the phone call and he says baba wasta nahi chalega he told me but my contact spoke to the main guy the head of the this thing and i was released with an apology so anyway all's good that ends well but i never shared this incident that time because i didn't want any unwanted publicity anyway i'm telling you so this is how it is they normally keep you there and they do take your photograph so after being photographed you will be issued an id card and given one pair of pants uh, and a top however the availability of the size is very limited and the condition of the clothes are awful this is all you'll receive for the duration of the sentence you will not be even permitted to wear your own underwear unless it is white in color hmm. my case all my underwears are black i wear the boxer shorts i know unwanted information okay you are expected to buy your own clothes which will cost you 20 dollars for one set of flimsy very thin pants a t-shirt and underwear you are not allowed to wear shoes or sandals unless they are flip flops i think mainly because they can be used as a weapon many enter the compound barefooted and remain barefooted for days until they are able to purchase through the prison supplier uh, because keep in mind there are a lot of people who are very poor like laborers and you know poor people so for them 20 dollars is a fortune they can't even afford a single dollar as a result they end up entering the filthy toilets barefooted the blanket and mattresses are mostly in a disgusting state you'll be handed out one thin blanket which is nowhere near enough to stay warm because the temperature is around 18 or 19 degrees celsius in the chambers yes it is pretty cold over there when i was there i myself could feel the chill even though i had clothes on like they didn't ask me to change anything anyway as a result many inmates fall sick continually and they in incarceration from the moment they set foot in the place the first thing that will hit you when you enter the main building is the stench of people's odor you'll also notice the horrendous overcrowding of the inmates It's similar when you open the gates to a chicken farm. The mattresses are wall to wall. You're not given your own mattress. Uh, that means on the floor, bed sheet or blanket. Every three inmates have to share one bed or one mattress on the floor with everyone walking all over you. In fact, if you want to know the worst prisons, uh, just go to YouTube and type Thailand prisons or the uh, the white tiger or the big tiger, big tiger. Yeah, Thailand. there you'll really see how prisons are Oof. this is <laughs> just compare just read that uh, i and i put a book review of one of the worst uh, australian guy was a drug dealer who got put in one of the worst prison camps it is so horrific in that they even eat rats and even if they catch a cat they will they will actually cook it and eat it cook it means raw fire they'll just eat it like that because the conditions are so horrific uh, it's it's very graphic i don't want to ruin your day anyway check that uh, that's another i'll put the link down below okay um so you have three inmates who share one bed one mattress on the floor with everyone walking all over you shouting on the phones and tv blaring all night with hindi movies okay there are no cups or mugs you have to take a used water bottle and create a drinking cup from it they they used to have cups before but several weeks ago there was a huge brawl between the africans and indians inmates during this event around 200 inmates were injured two dozen of them were seriously injured and hospitalized 
As soon as they are checked out from the hospital, they were quickly processed and deported. The story wouldn't be let out because of the brawl, because of inhuman crowding and absolute frustrations that people are subjected to that place. The vast majority of inmates are either African or from India. Many have come here during Expo 2020. They were falsely promised jobs and easy residency permits. Many of them cheated, many of them overstayed, and many of them ran out of money. They were told that if they handed over themselves to the authorities, they would be sent home within a few days. However, after handing themselves over to the authorities, they ended up staying in prison for months with no money to even call their homes and families, no information when they'll be repatriated home. And this, I can vouch and say, I even know of a case, uh, I've not met that person physically, but I met the person who met the person. He has been in prison for 32 years because he had a argument or a fight 32 years with someone very powerful from the Sheikh family. So uh, 32 years, imagine you're in prison without a trial. Mm. That is scary. Okay. There are a number of large, uh, number of other inmates who have been unable to pay their rent and they also have been jailed. Just imagine you didn't pay your rent and you're in jail. And like I tell you, if your check bounces, it's a criminal offense. Even though they advertise it's not an offense. I told you, you know, they'll never publish all this. Okay. Many of the cases were there from COVID-19 lockdown when they were promised that the government would pass a legislation so that real estate owners would not be able to file a case against tenants. But this didn't turn out to be the case. In fact, the pursuing of rental defaulters is vicious and swift by the RDC, that is the Rental Dispute Committee. It is supposed to be an arbitration committee, but in reality, it is a tribunal that is funded primarily by homeowners association in Dubai, who are mainly large local families and they act as enforcers. Okay, now I'll share with you uh, the bit that I spoke to him after he had sent me all this. I asked him, see, listen, uh, make me understand, like, why did they put you in jail? Like, you at least need to tell me that, you know? So he gave me his nationality, which I will not share with you. He told me his nationality. And I also asked him, what about Americans? What about British? Because, you know, we tend to have this, this belief system. If you're Brit or if you're an American, Gora passport, you are just, yalla, you can go. He told me, no, that's not the case. A lot of Americans, a lot of Brits who are in prison and they have been there for ages. Until they clear themselves, they are not allowed to go. And it's very strict over there. So this is what he shared with me. I will once again censor the specifics, but I'll share with you uh, what he shared. Now, uh, one minute. Okay. Around 10 years ago, 10 years ago, uh, approx, he had given his neighbor a post dated check as a guarantee. Okay. That was given to the landlord, which is a very bad idea. I don't know why you should give your friend a post dated check because remember, in some cases, they don't even put the amount. There are some cases where they give blank checks also. So he gave the country, but his friend, a so-called friend or neighbor, ran away without paying the amount. And uh, then this check was put in without informing this guy and the check bounced. It seems he paid a fine and uh, for the bounce check and he thought the case was over. Okay. However, the landlord informed that they would file a case in absentia of that, that neighbor or friend and he was held responsible because this was his check. So they awarded the tenant, let's say an amount of 200,000, even though the check was only for 50 or 60,000, whatever. So three times or double the amount. I'm not giving you specifics, like I said. So if it was 50,000, they made sure that the landlord got paid, you know, four times more or whatever for whatever was the amount. Uh, so this guy got in trouble both with the bank, he had to pay a fine there and plus the landlord now is suing and he didn't have that kind of money to pay one shot. The police informed this guy only after three days of his arrest that he had to pay this amount in full, otherwise he was going to rot and die over there itself. Um, he informed them that he was not aware of the case, then they said, okay, fine, then you appeal and um, he had to deposit a certain amount of money. Uh, of the amount until a new judgment could take up. And still he could not ev even afford this. 
So he is sentenced for 30 days and then another 30 days. Um, and he was not allowed to meet anyone. Finally, it seems uh, after a lengthy duration of time, couple of weeks, uh, he ended up paying only 25% of the amount to get bail or out. Um, as per what he has told me, until now, the case is still, you know, hanging, pending, and uh, he doesn't know what to do next. I'll not give you specifics whether he's planned to visit uh, UAE, whether he's uh, left UAE, whether he is in some other part of the Middle East or what the case is, because I want to ensure that this guy is safe. Now, this video is roughly around 20 minutes. In the next video, I will share with you the 14 shocking points that he gave about how life is in jail. So those of you who keep saying, oh, if my check is bounced, you know, I don't have to worry. Can I go back to UAE? No. It's pretty serious, okay? So put down your comments for until now, whatever I've completed. And in the next video, I'll put the links down below for this video as well as the next one so that you can check and read it and uh, let me know your thoughts, whether you agree or disagree. Once again, what I've told you is um, use your discretion to believe whether the story or whatever is shared is true or false. But I can assure you this much, someone who takes the initiative to share with me information and goes at so much of length it's definitely not a fake, uh, what do you say, story. All right. So good, bad, ugly. Feel free to comment below. And I sin sincerely hope, you know, whomsoever has to pay money, they pay money. Like I always tell, you borrow money, you give back. But if you owe someone money, negotiate with them, make sure that your slate is clean, and leave the country in good terms, even if you're not planning to come back. That is why before I left, I made sure everything was cleared bank accounts, credit cards, loans. I even took a character certificate, which I don't know where the hell it is. Yeah, I wish I could show you. Um, but I made sure everything was done so that nobody could claim anything otherwise. But that's me. But then again, there are many people who actually do some serious stuff of take a loan and run away. Why you do that, I don't know. Anyway, this is what I wanted to share with you. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And uh, to this person who shared this story, Thank you very much for trusting me. Part two is going to come next video. All right, this is me signing off. You guys take care.